in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, today let's talk about the flags. You know, let's talk about the biggest shit of our times and how it potentially affects us. You see all these flags? You know, you see Turkey there, you see Iraq there, you see Pakistan there, you see Bangladesh there, you see Saudi Arabia there, you see so many Muslim countries, Egypt and all the others there. You know what they're worth? All these flags put together? What is their, what is their say in the world order? What is their say in the affairs of the world? What is their say in anything? It's zero. Zero. Zilch. And you know what's so interesting? That before the French Revolution, before the French Revolution, which brought about a concept called nationalism. And this is why these flags are here, because everyone is standing up for their national flags. And see, the thing is, as, and, and, and before the French Revolution, there used to be flags too. Even at the time of the Prophet, وسلم, they had flags. But the flags represented you, your tribe, your people. Now we represent the tribe. We represent the flags. Now we represent the flags. We stand up for the flags. We sing to the flags. We salute the flag. We respect the flags. We make laws for the flag because of a concept called nationalism, which started after the French Revolution. And so all these Muslims standing up to all these different flags and being divided amongst each other, and means what? If Isa was to come here today, they would choose the flag over Isa. We think we would choose Isa, but when it came down to it, we would go with the flag. This is the situation of the Muslims. This is, and being divided into all these flags, these false flags that don't represent us, instead of the real flag, which is the flag of the Prophet, which I will talk about in maybe my next lecture. What was the flag of the Prophet? And something very significant. Very, very significant, I'm going to share with you. Because where do we get our term? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's not in the Adhan, it's not in the Quran, it's not really in the Hadith literature either. We get La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah from the flag of the Prophet, which I will talk about maybe one of these days. Anyway, the point is, we're divided. We're divided. You see, this is how we're divided. We're actually divided. There's more, I think, there are countries missing here. But this is how we're divided. Because we have, this is our situation. You know, we want to say one ummah, one body, one unity. Really? But look at all those flags. It's like, you know, being in the Kaaba and you're worshipping Allah, but you have 360 idols around the Kaaba. You are worshipping. You say you're one ummah. You say there's one God, one Kaaba, for one house of God. But you got all the other idols around it. This is just the same thing. The Ulama Iqbal, Muhammad Iqbal, the great Muslim philosopher, considered that the flags of today are the modern gods, are the new gods. In taza khudaume sabse bara vatan hai. And then he said, whoever follows this big god, the flags, the nationalism, it is the funeral of religion. You know, deen ka kafan hai. It's like the... The, the kafan of the deen, it is the, it is the funeral prayer of the deen, the Islam. And so, as long as we're divided into these groups, and as long as you're... Uh, see, there's nothing wrong with feeling good about who you are and where you're from. You know, uh, We made you into tribes and nations so you get to know one another. So you benefit from one another. But, if that becomes to the point where you start worshipping yourself, because a flag is basically about worshipping your ethnic group. Standing up and celebrating and praying and saluting and making laws for your ethnic group. Your, 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 you know, all your security and everything is about your, to protect the domain of your flag. Okay, so the biggest shirk of the modern times is to directly or indirectly worship the flag. For example, in Pakistan, they even bow down their head at the end of the national anthem, the, the Qomi Tarana of Pakistan. They bow down their head, uh, even though they bow down their head when the word Khuda is used, but, you know, it's ultimately respecting the flag. So, are you going to be a Muslim who prefers the flag over Jesus? 
prefers the flag over Isa, prefers the flag over the Mahdi, prefers the flag over the Ummah, prefers the flag over the Quran, prefers the flag over the Sunnah of the Prophet. And what is, what, it's quite shameful that not a single flag by a single Muslim country is the flag of the Prophet, وسلم, which I'll again talk about in one of my other lectures. But this is why you should cry. This is why our situation is bad. Because we have done this to ourselves. We've allowed this to happen to ourselves. There's no, you know, if we were all united as one, we would have a say in the world. If we were united as one, you know, things, people would care what we have to say about it. the world affairs. So, because we don't, and we're not willing to unite, and you know why we're not willing to unite? We are not willing to unite because leaders of the super Marxist, one of the Marxist, Marxist terms is the word superstructure, okay? So I'm going to put this down because uh, so the superstructure is the government, you know, the, the film industry, the different industries, the different, so they, they kind of like, the people that are in the superstructure, in the system, right, they have their kids studying in different Western universities, they have their money in the Swiss banks, they're not just going to say, hey, forget about, and, and then they have their prestige, their honor, their authority, all of that they got going on, why are they going to let go of their flag for and tell the others, hey, you let go of your flag, I'll let go of my flag, and we'll become one. It ain't gonna happen, because you know why? Because they're studying in Western universities, they look at everything from a Western perspective, they don't even relate to the common people under them. They don't, they could relate, you know, upper class can relate to an upper class person of another country, because the global culture is the same, it's the whole, same Hollywood, you know, culture, it's the same culture around the world especially for the elites. They all think alike. So when they look at the masses, they say, hey, how silly. How silly are these people, the masses? They don't know anything. Look at us elite. We're so smart. We are in this position, in that position. They're not going to give up their flags. They're not going to give up their flags. And in the process, do you know, they're just all, all of these guys, every one of these guys are just being used as proxies for others, as investment for others, as being used against, and, and, and how many of these are just against one another? And one's representing this side, and the other's representing that side, and the other's representing that side, and that's all it is. The biggest shit of the modern times is to give credibility to your false flags. Your false flags that represent the Muslim world. We should know the importance of the Khilafah. And we should know it is far upon the Muslims to break this, to break this and to reunite. It is mandatory upon the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in both the command form and negation form, Do not be divided. It's a command. And these flags, they divide us. And who benefits? Just the elite of each flag. The elites of each flag, they're the ones who benefit. It doesn't matter if it's Saudi, it doesn't matter if it's Iran. And you know, Saudi and Iran are the biggest culprits in the Muslim world. Why is Iran supporting Syria, the regime in Syria? S S Iran, Iran is just another, Iran and Saudi, they're the worst of this group, the worst of this group. So I'll just end here. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.